wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. We give God glory in his sanctuary. The Bible says praise him in his sanctuary. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty and wonderful and powerful God we serve. It's a joy to be with you on this Lord's Day. Thank you for joining us for Providence Sunday School this morning. Have a little song to start us off this morning. If you will uh, help me sing this song, listen to the song and not to the sound. Amen. This will be a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, oh, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Well, God gave his son, oh, God gave his son, when nothing else could help. God gave his son, God gave his son, oh, God gave his son, when nothing else could help. God gave his son, well, the son gave his life, oh, son gave his life, when nothing else could help. The son gave his life. Son gave his life, oh, son gave his life, when nothing else could help. The son gave his life, well, he died for you and me, oh, died for you and me, when nothing else could help. He died for you and me, oh, he died for you and me died for you and me when nothing else could help he died for you and me well there's one more verse that i like to throw in there just for good measure 855 oh 855 i will be in sunday school 855 oh 855 8.55, I will be in Sunday school at 8.55, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, 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 hallelujah, thank you for indulging me this morning, can we go into a word of prayer, our Father in heaven, God we thank you, we bless you on this the Lord's day, we thank you God for this day which you have made, and God, we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, no other day you've made, oh God, uh, that we don't rejoice in. But God, every day is a day of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, that we're coming up on the Thanksgiving holiday. But God, we know for your people that every day is a day of thanksgiving. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We lift up our voice. We lift up our hands. We lift our hearts unto you, Lord. And we say thank you. Despite everything that's going on, we say thank you. Despite how our body feels, Lord, we say thank you. Despite, oh God, the headaches and heartaches, we say thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we will not short you on praise because we don't feel like it. Oh, God, but we will. It's in our spirit. It's in our desire to give you glory. And we give it to you this morning. We bless you, Lord. Father, we pray that you will bless this lesson today. Let your word go out, oh, God. Let your people receive your word. And let us walk therein. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And we say thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Come on, one more time. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Never run out of praise, beloved. Never run out of giving God glory. Never run out of, amen, lifting up his name. Never run out of, oh God, lifting your voice unto him. Amen. It is a good thing to give thanks 
unto the Lord. That's what the word says. Yeah. Amen. Let's go into our responsive reading this morning. Amen. I will read the superintendent version, uh, superintendent scripture, and you will come after me with the, uh, the, the student uh, response. Amen. The Bible says, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Psalm 133 and 1. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be thankful. Colossians 3 and 15. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Psalm 84 and 4. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Psalms 111 and 1. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. And mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. 1 Kings 9 and verse 3. Ye shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19 and 30. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16 and 18. My soul longeth, yea, even faint for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Psalms 84 and 2. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. John 10 and verse 16. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. 1 Timothy three fifteen. And all together, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Psalm 134 and 2. Come on, let's bless him one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. We give God praise and glory this morning. Amen. Uh, we're praying for our teacher. I'm the substitute today. And you know, substitutes always cut up on the day that they come into class. They only there for one time. Amen. So they know that if they don't get called back, it's all right. But for that day, amen, I'm going to bless the Lord with this word. It is a mighty and a powerful lesson this morning. We're in lesson number 12 in our Sunday school book. Amen. The topic of our lesson today is sharing love. Amen. Can you say that with me? Sharing, sharing love. love. Amen. And this falls in line with our quarterly series about loving one another. Yes. Amen. If we were here uh, by ourselves on the face of this earth, we would still have the requirement of love. Amen. Because love begins on the inside and it takes God's love in order to do this because our love is insufficient to do what we need to do for God. And so he gives us his love and he imparts his love to us through the Holy Spirit. Let me say before we even begin today, you can't do what you need to do without the Holy Spirit. You got to have God. Yes. Amen. You got to have the Holy Spirit yes. working in you, working through you, working on you. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. You just can't make it by yourself. To do what God has called and required you to do, you're going to need his divine assistance through the Holy Ghost. And in this series we've been dealing with in the month of September, the struggles with love. And then in October, the uh, inclusive love. And then in November, we're dealing with godly love among believers. Amen. This is not something that we have to uh, uh, just acquiesce and go uh, with the flow. But in order for love to become love, you've got to push. You've got to press. Yes. You, you've got to uh, resist the resistance, yes. if I can say those words. Amen. In our Bible basis, we're looking at Acts, the fourth chapter, verses 30 through through Acts, the fifth chapter, verse number 11. And our Bible truth says integrity in giving and sharing in the early church was value. Amen. Not only was holiness, amen, a requirement in the early church, but giving and sharing was a value as well. And so we can't omit uh, the little things or the big things in this walk with God. What God has called us to do, he has empowered us to do. And so we should go with the program of God. If we're going to see the peace that passeth all understanding. Yes. Amen. You can be in a whirlwind, in a, in a storm, but God will give you peace. Yes. 
in the midst of what you're dealing with in order to make it in this life. Our memory verse today is coming from that Acts, the fourth chapter, uh, verse number 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Amen. Uh, they had just received something uh, really that's, that's more priceless than any of them could have purchased or bartered or inherited. And so uh, they received an out of this world gift. And that was their expression uh, to share it. Amen. To share what they had, to share what God had afforded to them. In this crowd, you had the poor and the rich. Amen. You had the well-to-do. You had the middle class, the upper class, all of them. Amen. This means that the gospel is universal. Amen. Everybody is a candidate for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Our lesson aimed today says by the end of this lesson, we will, number one, explore the Jerusalem church's practice and witness of communal sharing. We'll see how they did it. We'll see the impact of it. And we'll see the outcome. We'll also see the flip side, amen, of uh, non-communal sharing. Amen. What God has given to you, you are a steward of, amen, not a lord over. Being a steward of, you share. Being a lord over, you hoard. Amen. So we don't want to be guilty and fall on the wrong side of God. The second lesson aimed this morning is to repent of any idolatrous attachment to material goods. You let somebody come by and scratch your car. Amen. And you see it. You don't even have to see it. You'll get just as mad if you didn't see it. Amen. We've got to uh, disconnect the emotional attachment to things in the same way with people as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because God is requiring that, his, uh, that our affection, love, uh, and even our obsession be about him. Everything else is secondary. Amen. 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 And our third lesson aim this morning is that we will create a plan, not just hear what we're to do, not just understand what we're to do, but we are to create a plan to increase our giving for the common good. Somebody out there needs what you have. Amen. On the other hand of that, somebody out there has what you need. So God provides for it all. So sharing love is our topic today. Amen. Let me set the stage for what is about to transpire in the scriptures, and we'll get through this rather quickly this morning. Let me set the stage. The, the, uh, what happened is, in, uh, before we get to Acts 4 and 32, we have to go back to Acts the third chapter and see what happened in the midst of the apostles being apostles. Sometimes, uh, well, often for the believer, you can be in the will of God, doing the will of God, and still get in trouble. Amen. That's, that's really good trouble. I, I, I appreciate what John Lewis had to say, but there is some good godly trouble that we can get into. Amen. But just see it through until the end. See the end of the matter. Amen. In a few minutes, I'm going to preach. Amen. This is not the end of the chapter. Amen. There is another chapter after this. Amen. But come back at 10 o'clock for that. Praise the Lord. But understand that uh, the, the public officials of that time, they were grieved that the apostles were preaching and teaching Jesus Christ. So they had them locked up. The next day, they were brought before the rulers and the elders and scribes to answer for the accusations. The Holy Ghost filled Peter. Uh, Peter was always the one that was out front, outspoken, always had something to say. He jumped out there and he didn't mind, amen, risking it all to stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. So this Bible says Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You have to be led of the Holy Ghost to do, amen, in order to get the protection of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I think we could solve a hundred problems right there. Mm -hmm. If we would have the Holy Ghost yes. operate in the Holy Ghost, yes. amen, go when the Holy Ghost say go, mm -hmm. and, and go back when the Holy Ghost say go back, left, right, amen. Yes. Uh, this is not the electric slide, but this is the Holy Ghost maneuver. Oh, yeah. God amen. will guide you through difficulty if you just listen to him. I'm yes. supposed yes. to be teaching, and I'm here preaching. Oh, amen. Right. Hallelujah. And so Holy Ghost filled Peter speaks concerning the accusation lodged against him. And John, uh, understand that this goes back. This, this didn't start in Acts the fourth chapter, but in Acts the third chapter, there was a man that was begging uh, at the temple gate. 
And uh, Peter and uh, John uh, said, uh, look on us. Amen. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Amen. They were doing kingdom work, getting kingdom results, but they got in worldly trouble. And that's all right. Amen. Because God, amen, will bail you out of whatever you get yourself into. Yes, amen. amen. As he leads you. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, let me, let, me, let me slow down. I'm, I'm getting too happy here because I'm grateful that God's got me where he wants me. I'm grateful that God's got his hand on my life. And if I just stay under his hand. Everything will be all right. Yeah. Amen. If, can you say that with me? If I just stay, I just stay under, the hand of God, under the hand of God, everything, everything will, be all right. will be all right. Let me just escalate it a little bit further and say everything is all right. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. While you got a heartache and opposition and resistance, everything is still all right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So in Acts, the third chapter and verse number 19 after the miracle of the man being healed, uh, Peter begins to preach to the people. And he says, repent ye therefore and be converted. This wasn't something that was man. Uh, this was something that was God. And in order to get this that was God's, you got to repent. Amen. I know you think you morally good, but moral goodness won't do. Amen. You got to repent because all of us conceived in sin, shaping in iniquity, are on the wrong side of God. And so we've got to get it right with God yes. before we can get what's rightfully ours. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord God yes. Almighty. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so he says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Once you get in place, we've been talking all year about experiencing God. We've been talking about preparation. Lay the groundwork for a blessing. Then we'll talk about positioning. Get in the position God has placed you. You don't have to be in the same position that I'm in, but get in place where God has positioned you. And then we're talking about posturing after that. Staying in place. When hell and high water come, stay in place. Yes. When enemies come out the woodwork, stay in place. Yes. So that God, when it's time for you to come forth, mm -hmm. he will present you yes. unto himself. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We're preparing for a presentation. Amen. We're preparing for the refreshing that shall come from the Lord, from his presence. Amen. When God shows up, uh -huh. everything comes in place. Yes. Hallelujah. Children that have been out of place come in place. Yes. Parents that have been out of place come in place. Amen. Everything lines up when you get in position. Yes. Let me move on. We haven't even gotten to the lesson yet. Amen. Verse 23 of Acts, the third chapter says, And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. When you don't want to ascribe to holiness, righteousness, salvation, sanctification, all that God has put in his word for you, this is not denomination, this is the Bible. When you won't ascribe to what the Bible says, the Bible says that you shall be destroyed from among the people. Uh -huh. And let me, let me give, this, give you this, this is for free, amen. This is akin to the walking dead. You're fully functioning, going about day to day, but you're dead. On the inside, you're dead. No aspirations, no hopes, no dreams, no life, no, uh, no, no nothing. Uh, you're just dead. You'll be destroyed from among the people. But in Acts, the fourth chapter, as we move on in verse number four, howbeit many of them which heard the word believed. Mm -hmm. It didn't say, sister, that all of them believed. You would think after seeing a miracle of a man that had been lame for years, walking and talking that others would believe, but not everybody. Many of them mm -hmm. believed. Ah, hallelujah. And the number of them was uh, men above 5,000. You never know the impact of your ministry. Well, you say you don't have a title. Every, all of us are the ministers of Christ. Amen. You don't have to have a title to do the work. Mm -hmm. Amen. One work of God through you will draw so many. So stay in place. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. So 5,000, the Bible says, were added as a result of this man 
whom the apostles said, such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And so we go on. At the court, um, at, at court, the formerly impotent, healed, 40-year-old plus man is there. This man that got healed and delivered finds himself standing in court with the ones who were the mouthpieces for God. He wasn't there to serve Peter and John as his, as his saviors. He was there because the words that they had, he wanted to give life evidence that the gospel of Jesus Christ worked. So he's standing there in court. And Peter and John are commanded, amen, uh, to not speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. The rules couldn't find anything against them. He couldn't, uh, they couldn't lock them up, so they gave them a stern warning. Don't you preach no more in the name of Jesus. Don't you teach no more in the name of Jesus. But Peter says, uh, what you expect me to do? Uh, I've got God. Uh, uh, commanding me and you're telling me to do less than what God is commanding me to do, uh, whatever. Uh, you, you do what you got to do because I'm going to keep on doing what God has called me to do. Amen. Don't ever think that you're too old to do what God has called you to do. Don't ever think that your time is up. Amen. Because there is another chapter after this. Let me move on. I'm getting into the 10 o'clock service. Amen. So they're released. And then when they get back to their company of 5,000 men, and I presume there were women and children who also received Jesus Christ in that hour. They reported back to them. And then with one accord, the company of 5,000 men began to recite Psalm 2. It's amazing what we can do when we get on one accord. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's an effect when we get on one accord. Not on one accord with the pastor. Come on, come on, come on. Not on one accord with the evangelist. Not on one accord with the showrunner. But on one accord with the Holy Ghost. They came on one accord and began to pray for them. Amen. And pray that God will increase them. Give them the more boldness to preach and teach the word. And then in verse 31. Before we get to verse 32, this is what I love about this particular lesson today of sharing love. Amen. Verse 31 says, and when they had prayed, mm, hallelujah, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. I tell you again, you can't do this by yourself. As talented as you are, you can't do it by yourself. As intellectual and smart, uh, uh, masters, split masters, doctorates, you can't do the work of God by yourself. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Peter and John, look at the series. Uh, th these two men that were going about doing the Lord's business, Peter and John. Uh, then the lame man is healed. Look at the series of the setup. Uh, you, you have to understand that a, a, a setup, oh Lord have mercy. Uh, it, it looked like it was a setback because they ended up in jail for a day. But then uh, on the next day when they were brought before the rulers and it wasn't the rulers that put them in jail, it was the haters. Uh -huh. It was the religious folks that should have been in place but weren't in place and wouldn't succumb to the will of God. Hallelujah. So Peter and John, amen, healed the lame man. Hallelujah. And then a, 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 a working, proven gospel, 5,000 souls added to the kingdom. Repentance takes place. The receiving of Jesus Christ takes place. And then resistance from the world. What you're up against is just part of the plan. Hallelujah. The part of the plan of your salvation. Part of the plan of promulgating the gospel. Amen. Uh, then the one accord prayer and then the Holy Ghost in feeling. Uh, hallelujah. I thank God for that. I don't know about you, but I thank God for that. Let me, let me control myself because I'm running out of time to finish this lesson. Hallelujah. But if you just go back to Acts 3, read through Acts 5, you'll get enough 
to encourage you, enough to push you forward, uh, but certainly not enough to say that's enough. Amen. Keep on reading. Yes. Hallelujah. Keep on understanding what God can do, will do, and then ask him to use you to do it. Acts the fourth chapter, verse number 32, our scripture text for today, our memory verse says, and the multitudes of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. One accord, one heart, one soul. Can you imagine what we can do if we just come on one accord? We can't even get the same sports team uh, together. Some like the Saints and the Raiders and the Patriots. Uh, I'm so glad I don't watch sports. I can't take that kind of pressure on my life. Amen. I just keep it simple. I don't like, could you imagine uh, the, the disciples having a, a, a rugby team? Uh, you, you know, because stuff that should stay on the field don't always stay on the field. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, could you imagine a Providence uh, uh, mixed martial arts team? No, mm -mm. But being on one accord with one heart and one soul makes a difference. It makes a difference. And this, the Bible says they had all things coming. It's not like a marriage that we have today. Because, you know, the, the modern marriage, the, the wife says, what's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know we're getting close to Christmas. It's a silent night in here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, but, but in the kingdom, the saints uh, sing the song, it belongs to God. It belongs to God. To God, all the glory, the honor, the praises, all day it belongs to God. Everything you have belongs to God. Yes. And so when we have all things coming, it's not that anyone loses anything, but that everybody gains something. Yes. Oh, God. Verse number 33, let me move on. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. This was the uh, first uh, significant act of community when they had all things common. A common unity is what makes a community. Uh, that we have all things to where everyone has a part to share and uh, everyone has something to give. Everyone has uh, something to receive. And don't worry about running out of what you give and what you give up because God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus so you never lose. Amen. The Bible says, given it shall be given, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom so you can't outgive God. You just can't do it. And so this uh, verse 33 talks about the power that's released, the grace, the favor that's released into the lives of the people. Verse number 34, neither was there any among them that lacked. Those were rich folks in that 5,000. He didn't just go to the bottoms. Amen. But these 5,000, amen, were rich, poor, and in between. Middle class, upper class, lower class, everybody. He says, but neither was there any of them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the pieces the prices of the things that were sold. Understand that there was abundance and lack before all of this took place. And so those that had extra, of course, they didn't sell the house they were living in. Amen. But these were some that had a lot to share. They had gathered a lot. And I'm going to throw, throw a twist in there in just a second. Amen. And so let's move on rather quickly. Verse number 35. The Bible says, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Can I talk to every deacon uh, that wants to run things? Amen. This is a good work for a deacon to distribute. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not to govern, but to distribute. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. It comes to the preacher. It comes to the apostle. It comes to uh, the, the, the one uh, whom God has set there. Amen. The pastor, uh, the one that's in charge of feeding you with knowledge and understanding. And then it's distributed. Amen. The Bible says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. 
that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, that I will not open up a window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shall have not have room enough to receive. The reason why we don't have like we need to have is because we're eating our seed, number one. That which you're supposed to be planting, you're eating and consuming and spending. What belongs to God belongs to God, and God will make sure that you lack nothing. Let me move on because Jesus. I'm not uh, in that vein today. Praise the Lord. So verse number 36. And Joseph, by the, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and bought, brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Uh, can I tell you just a little bit about Barnabas in these next, next 25 seconds? Uh, Barnabas, um, they had to change his name because he exuded a, an aura that was not normal. They changed him from Joseph to Barnabas, the son of consolation, the son of encouragement. There are some people that you just have a joy of being around. There are some people that just uh, bring life into the room when they come in. It's just in them to do it. And then you've got the suckers of life as well. I ain't got time to talk about that. We're on a good track this morning. But it was under understood that uh, he said that Barnabas was a Levite. Levites, according to Deuteronomy and according to Leviticus, were not supposed to own land. Go back, check it out, whatever you have to do. But God had positioned him to be abnormal to his culture. And sometimes you have to go abnormal to culture in order to fulfill the will, the call, and the mission that God has placed on your life. Amen. Some of us are just like our daddy, and that's a bad thing. Some of us are just like our mama, and that's a bad thing. God is expecting us to come forward and to do what we've never done, be what we've never been, through his power, with his anointing, so that we can fulfill the purpose he's assigned to our lives. And we can do it with the help of God. Somebody say, I can do it. I can do it. With the help of God. With the help of God. Amen. So verse 37 is love in action. It happened after repentance. It happened after the acceptance of Jesus Christ. It happened after the infilling of the Holy Ghost. The reason why we get frustrated, because we're not filled with the Holy Ghost. And the second reason we're uh, frustrated is because uh, the Holy Ghost is not at work. Bible says, quench not the spirit. Mm -hmm. You can have the Holy Ghost, but him not be at work. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, mm -hmm. let me move on. Amen. And so this Levite who wasn't supposed to own land, owned land. And he came and brought, amen, the price of the uh, land and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, what happens? What happens when giving goes wrong? We're getting ready to turn a curve, and I want you to bu buckle up right here. What happens when giving goes wrong or when, when giving goes devilish? Uh, we go from such a, a highly applauded example of New Covenant, Jesus Christ-inspired sharing of love, to half-hearted giving. Ah, oh, Lord. Oh, my, my, my. So Acts, the fifth chapter, verse number one. Word of the Lord says, But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Amen. Understand that uh, this, this Christ-centered life is a radical life. It's not an ordinary thing. So sometimes you have to do radical things. And when you're not willing to do the radical. And, and, and you want to look good. But uh, at the root of it, there's something else. Uh, then we have a problem. And so they sold a possession. Perhaps they had multiple possessions. Because understand, Ananias' name means Jehovah is gracious. So that means by his name he had stuff. By his name he had more than what he sold or parted with. He wanted to appear right, but right was not in him. Uh, Mother Deola Wells Johnson says, if do right is in you, then you won't do wrong long. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me say that again. If do right is in you, then you won't do wrong long. 
You may find yourself on the other side of grace, but you won't stay there. I thank God that he calls us back. Anybody a witness that God calls yes. you back? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God will call you back yes. from your exiled yes. position. Yes. And so uh, he went contrary to who he was. Jehovah is gracious and he went contrary to that. Satan tempts us to be contrary. Satan tries to get us to be contrary to whom the Lord has made and created us. Uh, tell somebody, I ain't going, though. I ain't going. Amen. I ain't going. I, I refuse to go. He brought back a certain part. Amen. But in verse number three, he says, But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not that it was yours? You could have kept it rather than lie to the Holy Ghost. You could have kept it and kept your conscience clear. You could have kept it and kept your life. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Understand also that Peter was a fisherman and not a realtor. So he didn't know how much land was at that time. He wasn't done. Amen. But he wasn't there at the uh, table signing the document saying, okay, uh, here's what you uh, get for this land. Here's what you reported. No, but Peter had the Holy Ghost. Uh, Peter had insight, intellect, understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and revelation. It was the Holy Ghost that revealed to Peter what was really going on. Yes. Ah, glory to God. Uh, whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own in, in thine own power? Even after you sold the piece of property, you still could have kept your money rather than lied to the Holy Ghost. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? And thou hast lied, not lied unto men, but unto God. You've told a lie to the Holy Ghost. Let me move on. I'm running really out of time. The fifth verse of Acts 5 says, And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. He didn't give up the Holy Ghost. He gave up the ghost. He gave up his spirit. He died. Uh -huh. And great fear fell on all of them that heard these things. Just as God breathed into man the breath of life, the breath of life left out of Ananias. Uh -huh. And then verse 6 says, And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. Among the 5,000 there were caretakers. And I call them expeditious burial specialists. Amen. Three hours from last breath to burial to return. Verse 7, and it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Understand, can I, can I say this? Yes. Uh, to me, they appear to be a power couple. Because Ananias means Jehovah is gracious, but Sapphira's name means beautiful. Oh my, they had to be a power couple. Amen. They had to be ballers and shot callers in that day. And so that because God is gracious and you've got a wife by your side that's just as beautiful as ever. But then on the inside, that's why you can't judge a book by its cover. You got to look on the inside and see what's really going on. And you can only see the inside by the Holy Ghost if he reveals it unto us. And so they had to have been shrewd businessmen and women. Verse number eight. And Peter uh, Answered unto her, tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. Mm -hmm. Perpetuating the lie. And Ananias, and, and then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and they shall carry thee out. That's the quickest mortuary I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. Amen. From, mm -hmm. from death to burial, and then back to the place where they were assembled, three hours. Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, the, the, the body wasn't even cold yet. Mm -hmm. They buried a warm body. It was a dead body, but it was still a warm body. And so let me go on. Lord, have mercy. Ananias lied to the Holy Ghost. Sapphira uh, tempted or tested the spirit. When you succumb or supplant a lie, you're tempting the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the person that lied to the Holy Ghost and you backed up the lie, you become a tempter or a tester of the Holy Spirit. And so verse number 10. Then fell she down straightway at his feet. 
and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in, <laughs> found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Both bodies were still warm. Verse 11, our final verse, as I come to the conclusion today. And great fear, somebody say great fear. Great fear. Great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Great fear, great reverence, great awe, great respect for God. And I love the fact that they didn't fear Peter and the other apostles, but they gave reverence and awe and respect to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Make sure you don't take any of God's glory. Make sure you return all glory back to God. And so sharing love today. Amen. When shared properly, there is growth in the body of Christ. When shared improperly, there is death as a result of improper sharing. So share. I know that you may not have much, but you've got enough to share. Yes. Amen. If you're listening to my voice, if you're watching me right now, you have enough to share. God's not asking you to give everything away to where you're destitute, but he does bless you to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. God has not changed his standards, but what he has done is given us two vital things to accomplish his will in the earth. He's given us two very important things to make sure that his will is satisfied in the earth. Number one, he's given us Jesus Christ. Yes. Number two, he's given us the Holy Spirit. Yes. With the Lord Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit, we have everything we need in order to satisfy the will and the way of God. What are we to do to properly share love? Acts 2 and 38 really uh, sums it up in a very succinct way. Acts 2 and 38 says, repent. Uh, then Peter said unto them, repent. Number one, we've got to come back and say, Lord, I'm sorry I've missed the mark. I'm sorry that I have not done what you have said for me to do. Well, I I'm a good person. No, that's not going to work. Because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. Repentance makes up the difference. Yes. Let me move on. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost. And you know when someone gives you a gift. Uh, you say thank you. Can we just say thank you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift is free. Amen. The only thing we need to do. Is say Lord thank you. So sharing love. Equipped with the Son of God. And the Holy Spirit of God. We're giving and sharing and caring. Amen. It should not be hard to do with what God has afforded to our hands. And I'll leave you with Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse number nine. The Bible says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And then verse 10 is very key. As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially to them who are of the household of faith. Do something wonderful for your brother and sister. Yes, we've got an international obligation. We've got a universal obligation to help everybody, to love everybody, but especially to those who are of the household of faith. Let us pray. Father, once again, we seek your forgiveness and cleansing of any sin in our lives. We repent of our own sins that might be like the sin of Ananias and Sapphira. Holy Spirit, please remind each of us of any efforts on our part to lie, scheme, be deceptive, or hypocritical. We want to serve you in spirit and in truth. Have mercy, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Join us in just a few minutes for our worship service. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.